Have you ever wondered if love could be a state of consciousness? The Greeks described many different kinds of love, eight to be specific. And one of the most fascinating forms of love that they talked about was called agape, otherwise known as universal or selfless love. So what is this kind of love? How can we attain a deep perspective on universal love as a function of source consciousness? Imagine perceiving the entire universe as a manifestation of your own creation, where every tree leaf, every grain of sand on a beach, every molecule of water, and every aspect within your body and the bodies of others exist in profound harmony. In order to understand this perspective more deeply, you need to start to see how you are actually similar in some shape and form to everything else around you. Why is it that those we encounter in life often mirror aspects of ourselves? They seem drawn to us, sparking a journey into our inner workings and the significance of every interaction, belief, and perspective in our shared existence. This is the only way that you can come to see the beauty in all of creation. And this is how source consciousness is really animating itself through every living being. Some people say that all of reality is an illusion, maya, if you will. And this is the perspective that is very ancient in nature, where many ancient ancestral wisdom teachings talk about reality as a product of the mind. And if the mind is what creates the illusion of separation, then the only way that we can actually understand reality or the mind of source is to come more into a state of alignment with our hearts. Just as the Beatles embraced beautiful values and beliefs about reality through their music, individuals with a rich inner world actively choose to cultivate unity within themselves each day like the members of the band harmonizing their voices and instruments. These people choose to see a lot more beauty because they subconsciously are aligning with that beautiful element in the world around them. Truly, the way that we intake reality is a reflection of us. Just like if we choose to see with unity, everything around us will seem to be more unified, which touches on the previous point of our discussion about disintegration. When disintegration exists in life, it's because we are choosing to still be disintegrated within ourselves. When disintegration exists in life, it's because we are choosing to still be disintegrated within ourselves. If there's something that you don't like about reality or that you think needs to be separate from you, that you inherently push away from, maybe people that you try to avoid or situations or themes that you try to completely reject in your perspective, consider why that is and if rejection is really the solution in this case. The ego, as it's choosing to maintain its I, separate entity, is what seeks control. Whenever one seeks control and nurtures a desire for separation, they inadvertently breed for their division in their life. For as long as you try to be this separate being with your own separate state, and you think that you're creating reality separately from all other beings in existence, you'll feel like the world is against you. You'll never feel as one with nature. Because the world does not operate in your favor unless you choose to operate in line with the natural order. And so there are many ancient teachings that discuss harmonization with the natural element. When people choose to really be mindful about the way that they go about their days, they choose to spend time in nature, meditate, do breath work, do ancient ritual practices and ceremonies that align with the seasons and the different cycles of life, where you choose to be very actively mindful of the elements in the natural world, you likewise become more aware of the elements within yourself. And operating really in tandem with the universal mind, means choosing to be more mindful of what occurs within yourself. In the bustling city lived Meyer, a thoughtful young woman. Each day, she faced choices to focus solely on herself or to consider others. One day, she met a homeless man and chose to share her lunch and listen to his story. In that act of kindness, Maya felt fulfilled, embracing the universal love that connects all beings. From then on, 
She continued to choose love, finding happiness and connection in serving others. Even though you don't see that you are connected to everything else, to every other molecule in existence, everything is vibrating in synchrony. And the reason why we can explore universal love in this way is because of a concept known as quantum entanglement, which is a notion in quantum physics suggesting that everything in human reality is actually interconnected by nature. This also means, for example, that when you think about somebody and you start to entangle with their field just by thinking about that individual, you can actually start to resonate with them you can actually start to resonate with them. For instance, this is why some individuals experience telepathy. Consider when you think about a friend you haven't spoken to in a while, and suddenly they call. You might recognize this as an example of entanglement. And your friend, through the antenna of their own holographic mind, was able to receive that thought as we're all just receivers of information in this matrix. And as your friend received that thought and they realized that as you thinking about them, subconsciously the connection was formed and you were able to merge in this reality, though at separate distances. And so the way that quantum entanglement can be used to understand love is also that when you experience a state of love with another in the romantic kind of a way, you're actually connecting heart fields. When two heart fields become interconnected and entanglement occurs, you may begin to feel love from a distance and actually share the same emotional state as the other person. You might start to feel their thoughts, feel their emotions, and feel like the love is bringing you together even if you are in, for example, a long distance relationship, because love knows no bounds. Because love knows no bounds. And many speak about love as this eternal concept that has no limits to it, where people can be on different continents or feeling even a connection to a deceased loved one. Where love does not die, we can actually understand that it is because we're experiencing the soulful kind of universal love, that it's a pervasive theme in our lives. We're picking up love in terms of our consciousness, in our greater field of intelligence, which connects us to this frequency that lives on on a universal scale. Experiencing love entails learning to entangle with everything else in reality in a deeply affectionate manner. It signifies tuning into a frequency within your own heart center, which consequently initiates transformative changes across various aspects of your life. As a state of entanglement, you can start to see that when you are entangling with another being, whether it's a person or an animal or any kind of a thing in a loving way, you're allowing yourself to bring love into that situation. Consider a scenario where you find yourself in an argument with a loved one. Instead of approaching the situation with love, you might feel inclined to resist. This could manifest as anger, disappointment, or blame towards the other person. In such moments, you opt against embracing universal love and instead prioritize maintaining your individual identity. Think about how that other person could receive your energy if you're trying to really neutralize that argument. By choosing to maintain your separateness and to prove that you're right and they're wrong, you're only choosing to enhance the separation. You're only choosing to enhance the separation. The way to choose universal love in a situation like this is to think about how you can first decompress, relax, calm down your nervous system, and think about coming back to the set point of love within you, which can feel like different things for different kinds of people. You can choose to quite literally entangle with another variable that puts you in a heightened frequency of love, such as listening to your favorite song, dancing, doing some meditation, or just focusing on your own heart space to think about what energy do you really want to be in, to think about how you can choose universal love in this moment. Choosing love in moments of disagreement with loved ones can transform interactions fostering openness and harmony instead of focusing on being right or wrong. At the end of the day, everybody's right in their own way. And the only way that we can understand how to find love by lovingly entangling with everyone in our lives is by choosing to see their own perspective in a loving way as well. We can start to see everybody as an expression and a representation of us as they too are bringing in some loving perspective. If what we are experiencing doesn't feel like love, that is an opportunity to learn love. 
That is an opportunity to learn love. To cultivate more love within ourselves, it's crucial to deepen our understanding of how we can foster love in our daily lives. By nurturing a greater sense of love and compassion within, we can positively influence our interactions and experiences, fostering greater fulfillment and connection in our everyday lives. And this will ultimately allow you to entangle with more positive outcomes, with more people that will receive your energy, because just by emitting that love in your field and enhancing your heart's consciousness, you're likewise allowing yourself to operate in that frequency of love all of the time. This is ultimately how you can master yourself and find more reasons to entangle with love in your everyday world. On this trip, I had the pleasure of being in the wilderness, in the sacred spot of this Ecuadorian retreat site. And I got to encounter the universal connection to all of nature, which really felt like the frequency of love. Something that has been forgotten in the advanced civilization that we currently experience, where people are more disconnected at times, feeling more drawn into the artificial matrix rather than the organic matrix of the world. So here I got to interact with the natural flora and fauna, the trees, and felt really this beautiful harmony, which is something that deeply connects us from within ourselves to all of the natural world. And in doing so, I felt more connected to my own heart and soul, feeling as one with all of these elements, which are not something that I usually tend to encounter. And it brought me closer to the awareness that universal love really is the language of all of life that we can learn to speak together. For this exercise, I want you to think about, do you love love? What is love to you as either a thing, an energy, an emotional experience, or some aspect of your life? And do you feel that you are seeking love? If love is something that you are seeking, what is it actually at your core that you're looking for? If you feel that love is some external variable that you want to bring into your life, ask yourself, why do you think it is a separate entity? And do you feel that you can become the energetic vessel to be love so that you can magnetize more love into your experience by becoming that frequency. Life is a symphony of colors. Each decision a brush stroke upon the canvas of existence, like the artist painting his masterpiece, waving melodies of our own choice. 